morning so I've gotten a lot of questions uh, from friends of mine and students of mine um, about what I've been doing training wise so I'm gonna start uh, giving little one minute two minute three minute five minute little rants um, of how I can maybe help you out how you can improve your training whether it is martial arts or silat, kung tao, or strength training, or anything really, if you apply it to anything, the science is the same. Uh, one of the things that I've been doing lately is squatting every day. This is now week 10. We're entering Friday, so I've got two more days. On Sunday, we complete week 10 of squatting every day. And a lot of students and friends have asked me, why the hell are you doing that? <laughs> That's a good question. I've also been asked how I'm doing it, and I've been asked by other folks as to what can they do to do it. Well, I'll start with the why. Uh, I did it as a challenge to myself, and to strengthen my legs and body even further. You know, because in Penchak Silat, and Kun Tao, you're only as strong as your legs are strong and your ability to use your legs to generate power and same thing with your core and your back are very important and priority and the better positioning you have with proper strength and grounding and rooting the stronger you're going to be in combat if you ever needed it now, we don't necessarily train to go into combat all the time, or we try to avoid it, actually. But we train to develop the ability to be successful at it if we needed it. So, we need to have a strong fortress or strong body. In particular, a strong horse. A strong horse would be your legs and your posture. We call that kura kura. In the old days, um, now this is a story given to me by my teacher, Guru Willem de Tuars, Uncle Willem de Tuars. I call him Baba because he's like a father to me. Um, he told me that when he was a boy, he would see people in Java carrying water in big clay pots tied to bamboo sticks, one on the left and one on the right. And each pot probably weighed about 100 pounds. So you figure that's about a yoke of 200 pounds on their backs. And they would carry it up to the village and the mountain above them. So they would go from the river down beneath the mountain in the valleys to pick up the water. And then they would run it up the mountain to where the villagers were living. Now, that sounds to me a lot like strength training, a lot like squatting, a lot like farmers carry. And if we start to really think about our ancestors, and we really think about how our ancestors lived prior to the industrial era, uh, maybe even before the agricultural era, our ancestors had to be very strong and very much in tune with moving powerfully like an animal, being able to move in the jungles or whatever terrain they were in. So if you put yourself into that mind frame that you should be strong every day, not just, you know, for a competition or for whatever the case may be, then it's important to understand that being strong should be your priority over anything else because the stronger you are, the more energy and the more power you're going to have, no matter what you're doing. Now, for the martial arts, strength helps a lot. In the internal martial arts, you have an internal strength and an external strength, and they both have to be trained together. And if you look at powerlifting, the way you breathe in powerlifting, it's very, very similar, and similar mechanics to a lot of Qigong that's found in the Shaolin, in Tibetan yogas like Trul Kor, and in some of the warrior practices of India from Kalari Prayat, 
and in Indonesia the Tenaga Dalam, which we know historically a lot of that was influenced by the, Chao, the, the Shaolin and the Wudong monks, the Taoist monks, and the natives that uh, had their ancient traditions. Well, my point with all this is that you want to be strong like your ancestors. You want to tap into your primal strength like a gorilla or like a tiger and try to have that strength. You want to achieve that strength daily. Don't make it a fantasy, make it a reality. And the only way you're going to do that is by doing hard work, which we know in the martial arts, that's what Kung Fu means, which means hard work. You want to be good at Kung Fu? Well, then you got to do hard work. <laughs> and Kung Tao is hard work. Silat is hard work. So that's why I squat every day, to have a strong base, strong core, and a very strong posterior chain. So, when I started squatting, I could only squat maybe 135 pounds, and it was a struggle. And that was a few years ago, and I always struggled with my squat. My deadlift was better, my squat was so-so. So, I would start squatting several times a week, and then finally, uh, after January of this year, especially after I hit 40 in November, I started squatting more again and I said you know what it's time to cut the bullshit and become a lot stronger I'm not getting any younger so I might as well increase my longevity and my health by becoming stronger so I began to squat and then uh, working on my technique and my form and what I ended up doing in January was I said once the new year hit maybe about two weeks before New Year's actually I started squatting every day and the benefits have been incredible. My blood pressure is at uh, 127 over 68, resting heart rate between 63 and 64. Now, I'm a man of 40. Uh, that's pretty good. I haven't done my blood work yet, but I'll do it soon to find out what's going on. My body fat percentage used to be at 31. Actually, since I was powerlifting, it was at 36, and then it came down to 31, and now it's at 27, and it just keeps going down, which is good. I lost about 38 pounds, and that's a combination of the training and a keto diet, where I pretty much cut out most of my sugars and carbohydrates, and I keep my carbs anywhere between 25 grams to 50 grams a day, depending on, on the day. Um, and then what I do is I cycle it, so every 10 days or so I might go up 70 grams or 100 grams and then go back down pretty religiously back down to 25 or 30 grams a day. But uh, that combined with the training has really, really changed my body for the better. And anyhow, before I started squatting every day, before my eye surgery, I was at uh, 295 for one rep. After my surgery, I had to take a month off, and I wasn't able to bring the squat back up. I was stuck at 265, and it was a struggle to lift 265 pounds. After squatting every day, within four weeks, I brought the squat up to 315, and with after about the sixth week, I brought it up to 335. And now I'm doing reps at 315, and that's my 80%, so my new goal is uh, 395 or 405 and I'll get there soon so it's just a matter of progressively strength training and uh, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit more about how I do it so this is the why a little bit I hope you enjoyed it I hope you're not bored and uh, I'll see you soon respects bye bye